I'd like to welcome, as we do every day, our virtual parishioners here to St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. We are live streaming this Mass today, and we're praying with you and for you and asking God's blessings on you. Um, many people have been very generous with their donations. We ask people to continue to do that so that the live streaming that happens each day can continue, not only um, at the Mass, but later on in the day for adoration and other services that we have. Today's Mass is offered uh, for the intention of Mary McCullough. Later in the day, we will celebrate Mass for the re repose of the souls of Mary McCabe, Teresa Poggi, Orinda and Joseph Giacchetti, Genevieve Arian, Rolando Gonzela, and Brian Fisher. Today we are celebrating Tuesday of the sixth week of Easter. The celebrant for the Mass today is His Eminence, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, the Archbishop of New York. The opening hymn is Ye Sons and Daughters. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you, that we might offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass the more worthily. We call upon the intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary during this month of May dedicated to her. Uh, we ask her intercession with Jesus, her Son, for the forgiveness of our sins as we acknowledge them readily. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done, in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd at Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas. The magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying, and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook and the doors flew open and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Do no harm to yourself. 
we are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then, they, then he and all his family were baptized at once. He brought them up into his house and provided a meal. And with his household rejoiced at having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me, and not one of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin, because they do not believe in me. Righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me condemnation because the ruler of this world has been condemned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we say it, we say it so uh, glibly, don't we? But we mean it, that God can bring good out of evil. We believe that. God can bring good out of evil. We know that. It's uh, it's a, a truth that's, that's particularly soothing at this uh, troubled time as we're dealing with the, uh, with the toxic effects of the coronavirus. And we believe that with all the adversity, the sadness, the sorrow, the sickness, yep, God will bring good out of evil. We see, a, we see an illustration of that this morning from God's holy word in the Bible, the Acts of the Apostles, our first reading. Did you catch it? Uh, there was evil, evil. St. Paul was beaten half to death. Beaten half to death and left 
for dad only because of his fidelity to Jesus, his teaching, his church. He was then drug off and thrown into jail and chained. Boy, that's evil, isn't it? And <laughs> God brought good out of it. What was the good? The good was the salvation, the salvation of the jailer. What happened, of course, is an earthquake comes, the chains are broken, the jail's doors are thrown open, and uh, the jailer is so grateful and moved by the fact that the prisoners didn't take advantage of that, which would have led to his probably death in punishment, that he asked them, what must I do to be saved? And they said, well, you have faith in Jesus Christ. And he said, I do. And he and his household were baptized. Salvation. Salvation was the good that God brought from that evil. And he still does it today, doesn't he? He still does it. You wonder, whenever we have adversity, whenever we have sorrow, whenever we have setbacks or evil, uh, one of two things can happen. Either we can... Uh, flee from God, we can blame him, we can get angry with him, we can ask, oh, how can you allow this to happen? And we can move away from him. Or we can say, dear God, I don't quite know what's going on, but it doesn't make much sense, but it makes less sense without you. So my faith in you, dear God, is strong, and I need you, and I love you, and I want you, and I, I ask you to have mercy on me and to forgive my sins that's that prayer for salvation, see? And salvation can come from that. So good, God can bring good from evil. He did it in the Acts of the Apostles. He's doing it today. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrary. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. To the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we might always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on my sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn is At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing. For those who are not able to receive Holy Communion sacramentally today, please join me in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Through the intercession of our Blessed Lady, the Queen of the May, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. The closing hymn is This Joyful Easter Tide. <laughs> 